What's up and welcome to another episode of It's Tipped Up Fishing. As you can see, we've got the Snoresville over here. Yes! What's up and welcome to another episode of It's Tipped Up Fishing. As you can see, we've got the Snoresville over here. Mm. We did a um, Movember, which is for mental health for men. Tom, do you want to tell us something about it? What I'll tell you is that I'm proud to be with the, the captain, founder, chairman, chief executive officer of It's Tipped Up Fishing today. <laughs> uh, we're about to go on a trip, but grow your Movember for the month of November. It's just about raising awareness for mental health yes and men's issues like prostate cancer etc but we're just keen to get on holiday yes. that's why we all look the way we do <laughs> but guys if you're feeling depressed or anything like that don't be embarrassed find someone to talk to get some help this COVID thing is real and it's caused a lot of depression and mental health nothing to be embarrassed about things like depression is perfectly um, curable and you can get over it and get some help so serious note just get some help don't be embarrassed. With that said, shall we shall we uh, shave our snores? Because let's it's shave the first of December. Right. Yes, man, sir. Yes. Okay. You're keeping yours for a character, aren't you? No. You done an audition? No. no that's next next March. Shooting. Oh, great. So dad, dad, even dad's doing it. We got some doers in the background here. Okay. Snore, shave, and then let's go on an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so proud of this moustache because I'm, I'm 82 and I've never grown a moustache ever. This is the first one. So I refuse, I refuse to shave it off. I'm going to keep it as long as I can. I'm hating this if you wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you hating it? Because it's gross. I'm not a barber. Mm. No, I grow a beard. Yeah, real men grow beards. Real men grow beards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Awesome stuff. Now I'm 13 year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> and off we went to Dalström. Dalström, which was referred to as Place of Eternal Mist by the early Dutch settlers, is now a holiday oasis for Gauteng residents who travelled a short three hour drive to this trout fishing mecca. We were lucky enough to be invited to stay at Millstream Farm, which is both a wildlife and birding hotspot, as well as one of the top trout fishing destinations in South Africa. Fish are stocked every two weeks and rainbow trout of up to four kilos have been caught in their waters. Driving into this place, my family was blown away by its beauty. So after a short check-in, we went to our accommodation. We stayed at Unit 26, which was perched on the top of a hill with some incredible views. Lens flare. <laughs> um, yeah, we're here at Millstream. I've got the Tutai boomstick going. What's a boomstick, Keaton? This is a boomstick. So boomsticks are cool, eh? Basically what it is, is a, a fire lighting device. But this way you never need to buy fire lighters ever again. So you buy the boomstick for about 300 bucks, I think it is. But then you've got it forever and it works for 10, 20 years. So if you work it out, every time you buy some fire starters, 20, 30 bucks. So if you make 10 fires in the next year, the boomstick's paid for itself and then um, if you keep making fires with it after that then the boomstick's paid for itself and saved you money and what's great about it is it just keeps on burning so 
if you've got wet wood or you're a bit crap at making fires, the boomstick just keeps on going until you run out of gas, which you won't run out of gas because you've got, say, this, this to tie bottles three kilos of gas. So it's rocking like crazy. After a delicious braai and a comfy night's sleep, the morning broke. We decided to explore the venue with a walk to see some of Millstream's hidden gems. First we went to the crowned crane enclosures where we got to see Millstream participating in a captive breeding program for the southern crowned cranes. The southern crowned crane was placed on the endangered list in 2012. Their decrease in population is due to habitat loss and the use of harmful pesticides. But thanks to the efforts of venues like Millstream and passionate conservationists, we will hopefully see the numbers of these birds increase in the wild. Then we came across this zebra in one hell of a rush. Just before we saw this guy, we saw a herd running in the same direction. I can only assume that there was a predator of some sort on the other side of the hill. But to guess which one, I have no idea. So on we went down the hill with our walk. We surprised some yellow-billed ducks and enjoyed the tranquility of the multiple weirs. I do have to mention that the bird life here is just awesome. Birds like Bokmar kitties, long crested eagles, red footed falcons, black sparrowhawks, malachite sunbirds and so much more were seen during our trip. But with all this tranquility in the Ditchfield family it just has to be followed by mucking around. Mom's taking photos of trees and we're going on walkies! Walkie poos! Walkies! <laughs> oh gosh. Hey, this place is pretty and it's well looked after, I'm not going to lie. Everything is mowed perfectly, all the dustbins are empty and there's plenty of dustbins. So these three pawpaws found a bench. I found a rock. Dad then took over the camera to film some Oscar winning stuff. Nailed it. Then mom found a pet. Tom decided to do his own version of the Olympics. Tom is attempting to do the long distance jumping competition of his life without seeing his mood. It was very soon after that that we saw a sign that said the stones on the weirs are not for walking on and are instead for breaking the water current. Whoops. We then spotted a lesser striped sock bird, which Tom decided to creep up on and frighten. My incredibly world class and academy world winning filmmaking revealed that the stalk was still on, with Carmen being totally unaware of Thomas's very graceful version of bundu bashing. Good one, Tom. <laughs> what a bunch of mean bastards we are. What happened, Carmen? You gave me a very big fright. <laughs> I knew, I knew that it was going to happen. You just didn't I know just when. I didn't know when. <laughs> or by whom. Because I knew that if I lie here... You're so vulnerable. I'm vulnerable to you guys. Because I saw you walking down there. Oh, and did then you? I thought he's going to come. No, that was long ago. So the weather was mostly raining during our stay, but I did get a fish or two. But I couldn't bring the cameras. I did look like a homeless drowned rat after that session, but as soon as the sun came out, I went out to catch a lacquer millstream trout. So the technique that I'm using in terms of retrieval is the following. So you cast it out into your designated spot, which mine is at the edge of a drop off. So you cast out, there you go, then 
you do the funnest part, which is wait 15 long seconds. One, two, three, four. Keep your tension on your line. 13, 14, 15. Okay, just so your your fly, your woolly buggy in this in this case is at time to uh, sink. <laughs> there you go, lovely little rainbow trout, this guy's probably going to be dinner, how amazing, I'll show you the technique now. Then you give it short quick jabs, just like that, jab, jab, jab and feel free to mix it up a bit, so you can go uh, jab, jab, wait, jab, jab, you can make up some fun drumming rhythms. So jab, 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 and just make sure your fly gets deep enough, especially in summer, because in summer the fish tend to go further down. Um, yesterday it was raining, so the fish are up at the top. So I didn't have to wait 15 long seconds to get the line down. So that's it for part one of the Millstream adventure. Join us in part two where we get to meet some fantastic birds of prey. Dad tries to hug a Harris hawk. I go horse riding for the first time and really injure my... Um, <laughs> I'm not good at that. I'm just bouncing, bouncing my nuts on the ground of bloody saddle. We also meet and interview an expert of Millstream fly fishing. David, a fly fishing guide and bailiff of Millstream, takes us through some brilliant fly fishing tips and tricks. It was a nice take. I think you went for the Papa Rochi. So if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe. And if you really like this video, become a Tip Top patron. Tip Top patrons help fund making free content like this video for you guys. Till next time, tight lines guys.